Hi guys, welcome back to a, another vlog. Now we have some talking to do because if you guys noticed, I did not post a vlog last week. There's a reason for that. I read a single book, one single book, The Art of Prophecy by Wesley Chu. It took me a little while to get through this. Now I have nothing negative to say about this other than I don't know why it took me so long to read it. Other than maybe I was just reading it physically and that's not what I'm used to anymore. I like to immerse the read, you guys know that. But I loved this book so much, so much. And I, I don't, I don't even know what to say. This is one of those, like, I liked it so much. I, I, I just, that's all I can say is that it's amazing and go read it. But I actually just posted my 12 books by 12 friends. Uh, Patrick Ryan, he actually decided to take on this idea. And this is the book I recommended to him for his 12 by 12. And I love the characters. I love the setting. You guys know this. I talked about this in my last vlog. Uh, I really like the plot of this. Now there are multiple plot points that you're following. There are multiple POVs, but I do think each POV is pushed forward by its own plot. And there's an overarching plot of the story in that we have a guy who is deemed the savior of their nation. And they've known for a while who the chosen one was, and they've been training him. And all of a sudden, the prophecy that they thought they were going to fulfill is moot because they were supposed to go up against the Khan and the Khan dies. And so this kind of takes off after the fact, after that, after the Khan dies and the religion that had sprung up around our chosen one um, kind of turns on him <laughs> and they try to kill him. So they're the main character here. I can't remember her name. Let's see. Tashi, our main character. Uh, she kind of decides, uh, no, this is not going to happen. I came to help the chosen one and that's what I'm going to do. You guys can't have him. And I don't think his prophecy is unfulfilled. I think you guys are jumping the gun. So she hides him away and everything goes from there, <laughs> but it's so good. And I loved Jian's story while he's at the war college, everything like that. I loved the world building. This is so weird for me. I loved the world building. That could be why it took me a little while to get through this because I was enamored with the world. So I kept rereading things because I was like, oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. You know, you get some of those books where you're just entranced by the prose. This wasn't the prose though. This was like the descriptions of these floating islands and things like that. I, it was just so cool. I had kept having to reread parts of it so I could just be like, oh, that was awesome. That was awesome. And the fight scenes were really cool. I didn't think I was going to be invested in a martial arts story, but apparently, apparently I, I am really loving the martial arts thing. So I do know there's another author, like he writes superhero stuff. So I'm like, eh, don't want to read that. But then I found out that he was doing one like similar to this. And now I'm very intrigued because <laughs> I liked this one so much. I'm also very intrigued for the combat codes as well. Now I did some roles. <laughs> I wanted to go ahead and pick a different book, but, and I'll, I'll insert the roles here. Um, I drew part of your world by Abby Jimenez. Now, after reading that chonker of a book, I was like, you know what? I need an audio. I, I need an audio. And so I went to look up part of your world on Libby and it's available or it's there, but it's not available just yet. So I have a few days before I can actually access it. And so I drew again, <laughs> the scary book, the scary book came up and I am reading children of time. However, I am no, 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 about 160 pages into this and it's interesting. I, I, it's interesting. I don't like it though. <laughs> like everything about this is interesting. I really like the way it explains how these spider aliens came to be and what happened and how humanity has escaped earth and what's going on with all of that. Like it's interesting, but I don't care. Now I've talked about this a lot before. I'm a plot driven reader. If your plot is not tight, there's a good chance I won't like the book and I don't feel like we're getting any plot from this. And so that's kind of what's killing it for me. Like, okay, everything is interesting, but where's the story? You know? Um, Right now, there's just a lot going on that I, I, I just don't care about. And I hate to say that because I do think this book is very well written. And it seems like a lot of research had to happen before this book could be a thing. And so, I mean, I'm appreciating all of that, but I, I don't like it. 
I, I don't like it. So I, I, I'm going to go ahead and DNF. Um, 160 pages. I feel like I've given it enough time. And I now know that Children of Time is not the book for me. But that does mean that I need to get a new book. Okay, so here is the number that it generated. Let's find out what book that's going to be. Polaris Rising. And I do think that I can download that at least from Scribd, Everand, what, whatever it's called now. Um, but let me grab the book. Okay, here we have it by Jesse Malik, an enthralling and immensely satisfying book. So I think this is a sci-fi romance, if I am correct. I'm not sure, but I've heard there's a snarky main character in this. It says, a space princess on the run and a notorious outlaw soldier become unlikely allies in this imaginative, sexy space opera adventure. The first in a science fiction trilogy. So, I mean, it sounds completely up my alley. I wasn't like trying to go for another romance, but <laughs> it happened. Um... So, I mean, yeah, I'm, I've recently purchased this, so I'm kind of excited that it's coming up so quickly. <laughs> all right hello it is 1 a.m and i just finished polaris rising <laughs> oh man today has been a long day i'm a little tired but i just finished this so i wanted to go ahead and talk about it i don't think i with this cover and the synopsis and everything like that i don't think i was expecting this to be as romance heavy as it was um I have to say I loved the romance in this book, but the I found the sci-fi a little lacking. It was like Megan E. O'Keefe light, which I didn't really mind, but I was also a little thrown. <laughs> like, I didn't know what to think of some parts of this, but it definitely read like someone had read Megan E. O'Keefe and really, really wanted to make something like it and just fell a little short. I don't think that this was necessarily disappointing in any real regard other than I was expecting a sci-fi story and I got a romance, but I mean, <laughs> and it says that this book is addictive. I do agree with that. I will probably continue with this series. It's a trilogy and I like it enough that I want to read more about this couple, but I think now my expectations are going to be different because obviously now I know what these books are and <laughs> I don't know I just kind of feel a little let down by the fact that this is more romance than sci-fi not a bad book though and like I said if you're looking for a romance that's sci-fi this is actually a pretty dang good one um romance not sci-fi story <laughs> be clear about that which does mean that I need to draw for my next book because Part of your world has not released to me just yet. And honestly, I'm considering picking myself. I don't know. <laughs> like, I really don't want to get another romance. Okay, so if I land on something romance, we're just going to ignore the fact that I landed on romance. How about that? If I've moved or shifted or anything like that, it's be, oh, excuse me, hiccup. It's because I accidentally left my journal in the other room. Okay, so I have the random number generator pulled up, 1 to 48. Let's generate 35. <laughs> I feel like we're staying right in the 30s here. 
Okay, let's see. 35. That's because we have already, already selected 35. Um, the Unbound Empire. What is that? Oh, it's the third book in the Swords and Fire series or trilogy. Okay, so we have the final book in the Swords and Fire trilogy by Melissa Caruso. Tethered Mage, Defiant Air being books one and two. I really, really enjoyed this series. I think I've talked quite a bit about it because I had read Obsidian Tower and have <laughs> purchased Quicksilver Court, all that stuff, only to realize that a series that like, came before those. And I really love Melissa Caruso's writing. So very much looking forward to this. Yes, I have a library bound copy that I got from like thrift books. So <laughs> um, I'm, I'm never fussed about that, especially because the library bound paperbacks, like you can't really damage the spine. <laughs> but I'm very, very much looking forward to reading this. I'm also very tired. <laughs> so, and that's probably why I couldn't remember what the heck the Unbound Empire was, but I will check in with you guys when I get a little further in this. Also, I probably posted a clip of my son and his first piano recital. I just kind of want to let you guys know he's been playing the piano for four months and he already could play Jingle Bells with only a minor hiccup. So I was pretty, I was pretty proud, pretty proud mama. <laughs> All right, let's get into this. Hey guys, sorry, this is going up so late. I had some issues with my PMDD, so wasn't in the best headspace or the best mood. And so I didn't come in and check in with you guys, but I need to wrap up this vlog. And I am going to let you guys know I finished The Unbound Empire. It was really good. Now, I felt like the this is, was a very satisfying conclusion to the series, but I'm not sure it was my favorite ending and I had two bookmarks in here. What, what was going on? Um, <laughs> but I thought this wrapped up the series very well and it has gotten me very excited to continue to the secondary series with the Obsidian Tower and kind of reread that with all of this history, this background. And I love the relationships in here. I love the characters. This does get highly political because as you know, if you've read the series, um, we are now dealing with situations where our princess is taking on a lot more responsibility and power. So I'm, I'm, I'm just, I really enjoyed this series so much. You guys will see this on my top 100 <laughs> in the near future. So yeah, I mean, great, great series. So I highly recommend it. If you guys have not yet read Melissa Caruso, she is quite awesome. And I definitely recommend reading this series before reading The Obsidian Tower because there was a lot of background missing <laughs> when I read The Obsidian Tower that if I had had the context for it, I feel like it would have come across even more powerful on page and The Obsidian Tower. So yeah, yeah, just great book. <laughs> but I also finished Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. No, I have to say this. I get it. I get it. That is a baby goat. Yes, that is a baby goat. And the baby goat is a character <laughs> in this story. Uh, and it wears pajamas. But we have an elitist female and a country boy who meet after her, um, I think it is her grandmother or aunt, something like that, passes away. And she's driving through their small town on her way back home, ends up having some car trouble. And he helps her out. They don't ever plan on seeing each other again. But when she realizes that she's going to end up being an overnight guest at the town, she ends up going back home with him. And it develops into a very, very sweet relationship. Uh, we do have some trigger warnings for this. She has been in an abusive relationship where gaslighting is a thing. And so she's trying to break free from that person in a good majority of this book. However, she doesn't know how, and because the person who was the culprit of the gaslighting is such a charming person, which is typically the case whenever gaslighting is involved, um, 
all of her family and friends are like, why don't you just get back with him? You, you know, you love him. Just get back with him. And she's like, but this guy takes care of me and he's sweet. And I really like this guy. And so she keeps taking weekend trips to go see him. And I think there's a reason this is so highly rated. I gave this five stars. I think it's perfect for what it set out to do. And of contemporary romances, this has to be my favorite that I've read. I have not read very many contemporary romances though, because that's not my thing. However, this hit almost every romance list I've seen, like best of romance. And so I, I had to try it because whenever it hits so many favorites lists, you have to be like, wait, wait. <laughs> okay. So this is it. This is the thing. <laughs> But that is going to be the end of this vlog. I hope you guys have a wonderful Christmas if you celebrate that or whatever holiday you are celebrating around this time of year. I hope yours is fantastic. Like, subscribe, and I still have a Patreon that we are going to jumpstart in January. So I hope you guys will join. Bye.